Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. Today's video is a collaboration with Chantal, also known as Darkest Raven. She was Darkest Raven Designs here on YouTube, and now she is Raven's Minis, so check her out. She does a lot of really cool Harry Potter miniatures and things like that. So basically, uh, Chantal and I decided that we would pick a book from the Harry Potter universe, and then each of us would independently make our own version of that book without the other seeing uh, what we're doing, and that's the DIY today. So in this video, we're doing From Egg to Inferno, A Dragon Keeper's Guide. Hey, it's Danny from the future. I completely forgot to tell you guys the rules we came up with for this DIY. Everything has to be either something that is recyclable or something that is being reused. We can use some of our craft supplies that we already have, but if we need to buy anything new, it has to come from a second-hand shop. It has to be something that is used. So recyclable materials or reused materials. That's what this is about. Let's continue. I've got to say, this project, there was blood, sweat, and uh, proverbial tears. Sweat as in it's hot in my studio. For some reason, today was just wicked hot and so was yesterday in my studio. I have air conditioning. I have no idea why it was so hot today. And blood because I chopped like a pretty good chunk into my thumb while I was using my ruler and exacto knife and I have never done that before. So it was uh, an experience. Anyways, this was a huge project creating this book. I got a job like four months ago or so and I have not had time to do a big DIY project. I've done a couple small ones in the in between and some unboxings here, but this is a big DIY. <laughs> like I did a lot of stuff, a lot went into this. So I hope you guys like it. I will leave a link to Chantel's channel in the description box, as well as a link to her version of this book, which I have not seen yet. I will definitely be in the comment section over there, so you should go over there, leave her a comment as well. But first, check out the description box below for all the supplies you're gonna need to make this DIY and let's get started. So the first thing I did was sketch out my idea for the book, and I don't think it's gonna end up looking like exactly like this, obviously. Um, I just sketched this out with nothing in mind except for what I wanted it to look like. I'm gonna show you how I am going about trying to make mine look like this, so maybe some of those things that I show you throughout the video are going to help you with however you want your book to look. Our first recycled, upcycled, used, uh, supply that I'm going to be using is just an old book. I picked this up at Goodwill, which is a secondhand shop, for $3. I feel like this is perfect because it is uh, Grimm's Fairy Tales, and it's really cool actually. It's got illustrations inside. Some of them are full color illustrations, like this one. It's from the 60s, early 60s. So you're gonna need a base book if you do it the way that I'm doing it. I know a lot of you are gonna cringe, um, but I am going to cut this cover off. And I don't call it destroying a book, I call it evolving a book. It, I'm giving this book a new life. You can see the book binding cloth in between on this one, which is gonna make it a lot easier because all you wanna do is cut that book binding cloth and it should, the cover should just come straight away. And there it is. So now we have our uh, block, our text block right here, separated from our cover. In my sketch, I've got an egg on there. And I know we're using recycled materials or things that we had laying around that would not be recyclable, but be going in the garbage. So one of those are these Easter eggs. And I had an old Easter egg sitting around. First thing I need to do is cut it in half. I'm gonna do this uh, one, one half of the egg at a time. So I'm just gonna set this egg, bottom half of the egg down on my cutting mat and I'm using my cutting mat to measure where the center is. So the X-Acto knife is coming in to save the day. Now I've got my egg cut in half, so I have two halves of the egg. I guess it doesn't really matter which half that I use. I know it looks almost like I have a fried egg on my 
craft table, but I have a piece of uh, craft paper or scrap paper underneath, and here is half this half of this egg. I want it to be connected together. So you could either do this with glue if you want to. I don't think it's necessary for what I'm going to be doing. So I'm just actually going to get uh, some double-sided tape and put it right in the grooves that connect the egg together. I'm just going to take the two halves and connect them together, get the grooves lined up. I'm not going to glue this directly onto my book or anything like that. This is basically my mold, I guess you would say. Like this is how I'm going to make my egg shape and I'm doing that with polymer clay. But first, we need a little bit of aluminum foil. Now, I am not breaking the rules. Aluminum foil is recyclable. Um, it's just not recyclable if it has food on it, you know, if it's messed up. If it's clean aluminum, it is recyclable, and we're going to be not putting food on this, so it's totally fine. So I'm going to first sort of uh, push this aluminum foil into my egg. I want to sort of get that egg-ish shape. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is just to keep what I'm about to make from collapsing in the oven. Next, we need another bit of aluminum foil, and then we're going to shape it around the egg. So this is what, that's kind of like what we're gonna use as our base for making an egg shape. And then in comes our polymer clay. So I just want to go ahead and take a bit of clay off, and what we need to do with this is sort of uh, knead this and roll it around until it is nice and formable. Flatten it and smooth it. You want a piece that's big enough to cover the egg. You want to have it kind of come out a little bit. I know that's hard to see because it's tin foil, but like you want it to come out a, a little bit around the egg as well. Now I'm just working this around so that it's nice and flat around the egg. Now I am gonna use just a little bit of water and on my fingers just to smooth this out. I want it to be nice and smooth, as smooth as I can get it. You might wanna check your personal packaging for the clay that you personally used. Mine says it goes in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 30 minutes. And now the egg has baked for 30 minutes in my oven. Now what we wanna do is paint this and I want mine to be just completely golden. For this, I'm using my favorite paint pen. This is an Art Deco, uh, Deco Color Premium uh, Gold Foil Pen. I do suggest you do this in a ventilated area because it is uh, quite pungent. <laughs> and there we have a metallic gold egg. Um, once the paint dries, I'll cover it with a uh, glossy finish. I'm gonna put a few coats of glossy Mod Podge on here. Um, you wanna let them dry 20 to 30 minutes in between each coat. I'm probably gonna go with like five, four or five coats maybe. We'll see where it goes, but yeah, let's go ahead and put some Mod Podge on here. Now, while that's drying, we're just gonna need some cardboard. I do suggest uh, flattening this out before you start working with it so you can get it just nice and flat. You can uh, use a rolling pin. I'm just using this, this is an old tube from uh, probably a book cover or something that was sent to me from Wizarding Trunk. Apply pressure and roll it like a rolling pin over the cardboard and it will flatten it out. And now we're gonna paint the cardboard. The first layer we're gonna do is just a, a black. We just wanna put a layer of black paint over this. You could use spray paint if you want. I'm using acrylic paint. Now we're just gonna let this dry and once it's dry, we can do our next coat of paint. The next paint we're gonna be working with is this Color Shift by Folk Art, and this is Blue Flash. And I'm just gonna put a layer of this on top of the black. There we go, now we're gonna let this dry as well. Now we're gonna work with some green flash Color Shift paint. So I think the green and the purple are gonna work really well together. I'm actually gonna go ahead and use a sponge for this part because I really do want to have some texture in here because this is gonna be my last paint coat, I believe. I'm going to leave it like this, let the green dry, and then we'll continue. Now, while that's drying, let's get out our text block again, and I'm gonna try something I've never done before. I have a paper marbling tutorial, 
um, in which I marble paper. So I'm going to marble this, but I'm going to try and marble the edges of the book. <laughs> so wish me luck. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, I don't know what I'm going to do. So let's do this. I'm going to use some uh, craft paper here, some uh, scrap paper to sort of uh, protect the edges of the page other than what I want to marble. So now we kind of have a protective kind of uh, masking type paper around the edges and we're going to start marbling the edges of our book block. Looks like I got a big spot right here that didn't like the, the paint that I was using or something. So we're going to work on this side. Now we can take our book and just touch it in there. And I'm just going to dab this with a damp cloth. And there is our marbled edge. It doesn't look perfect, but I think it's going to look pretty cool. Here is our end result. <laughs> I think that looks really cool right there. And then we go over to this side and then to the bottom. I think marbling the edge of the book is the right way to go. That looks really cool. So now you can either go ahead and cut out your scales individually or like in a row or something with like a strip along the top that like keeps them together. I am going to try and do this the easy way. I have a heart cutter. So this is going to cut a heart shape out. It's like a heart punch basically. And I'm thinking I can use this to make scales. And I feel like it's going to be a lot quicker than cutting everything out myself. I'm going to trim off anything that isn't like uniformly painted. So I'm going to trim the edges off. So there is one single scale. Let's keep going. And now we have a whole bunch of scales ready to work with. Unfortunately, I did hurt my thumb while making these. I just accidentally cut into it with my exacto knife. Anyways, yeah, we're probably going to have to do an entire another sheet of this to cover the entire book, but this is what you want. We got all the little scales we're going to work with and now we're going to glue them on. So this is my little test right here, making sure that things are lining up properly before I start actually gluing things down and making it permanent. I just want to make sure that it looks good. But before we do that, I think it's probably important to just paint this cover black, just in case any like little parts kind of show through. With a hot glue gun, just starting at the very corner here, we're going to put some hot glue on the bottom of this and then we're going to place it right at the edge and I'm kind of overlapping it as you can see right here just to make sure that I have enough to kind of like wrap around the book. Smooth that one down and let's keep going all the way across. Now we have two rows on there and you can see they're staggered so we just want to keep doing that. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hot glue my egg onto the cover of the book. You just got to kind of eyeball it because I want mine to be somewhat to the center, but I also want it to be low so that I have enough room up top for the title. So now with all the scales on the book cover, it looks like this. I at first started trying to fold these around on the inside and they're just too thick and it, it just, it, it wasn't working. So I actually trimmed them off instead and we're going to uh, make this look a lot better by the time we're done. And the book was very hard to, um, you know, open and close and fold like this on the edges of the spine. So I just kind of uh, lined up my ruler and made a little cut down both sides of the, of the uh, spine right here to make it easier to fold. So that worked out. So I've got this fabric and this actually came from an old uh, handbag that I got at a uh, secondhand shop. So that's how this is kind of a recycled material. And it's going to cover up the spine to hide 
the imperfections that I made. I thought the kind of scaly texture was would be good for this. Uh, however, I don't want it to be black. I am going to paint it with this color shift blue violet flash. I think that's going to make a, a pretty cool look to it. We'll see when it dries. Before we go any further though, I just want to kind of look at what I have here. So I've got a tail that's kind of coming around and wrapping around the egg. So that's going to be the next thing that I do here. So I'm just going to flatten out some pieces of clay about like this. I'm going to get a piece of foil and sort of shape it how I want the tail to be shaped. So that's going to be the shape of my tail. And now the idea is just to um, cover it in clay. And I've got this little piece that came off of that purse. It was like part of the strap the, the, for the fabric that I'm using for this. So I'm going to actually use this to sort of give this uh, some texture. I know it's not going to look exactly like scales, but at least it won't just be flat. So now this is going in the oven for about 30 minutes. I don't know how much of that just lost audio. <laughs> um, sorry about that, guys. I didn't have my audio recording, but now I do. We are just gluing our uh, fabric texture onto the spine of the book. And I'm pulling it around and pressing it down right here. And then we're going to need to bend it and make sure that it stays when it's when it's bent. We need to make sure it stays in that shape. So it was a last minute change, but you know what? I think that actually turns out looking pretty cool for the spine of the book because it looks like almost like uh, the belly skin <laughs> of the of the dragon, and this is like the the regular scales. We've got that spot right here where when our our tail comes out and we paint it, we can tuck that in there and glue it in. And so, yeah, that's going to be fine. In my original sketch, I have these these little corner pieces and I was going to make those out of cardboard and paint them to make them look like uh, brass. But I'm getting short on time now <laughs> for one thing. And also, luckily, I found these in my craft drawer. So I've got enough of these that will go along the edges here to fix the edges of the book. I'm just going to clean them up and then put some black paint around them just to cover up the cardboard look. It's just the edge of the book, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. And while that dries, we can finally get to re-binding our book. We're going to need some book binding cloth. A piece about this big should do it for me. I'm going to uh, glue this down onto the spine of my book. But first, I am going to add a little bit of this dark red ribbon, and that'll be sort of like, you know, a bookmark. And I want it to be long enough so that it's going to go the length of the book and then some extra over here that I can glue down onto the spine. So we're going to glue that down first using PVA glue. Add some PVA glue here, and then center the ribbon and go ahead and glue over the top of it as well, just to get it nice and glued down. And then we put our book binding cloth on top of that, and then just put a generous amount of PVA glue on top of it like this. All right, now we just need to let that dry. It shouldn't take long, maybe about 15, 20 minutes. This is not completely dry yet, but it's good enough that we can go ahead and start. Always make sure that you are putting it in right side up. We place the text block right in the middle where we want it, and then we use PVA glue to glue down the book binding uh, cloth. You want it to get a little bit dry before you do this, but while it's still a little bit wet is fine we are going to use some end paper in here. This is one that I created myself, um, and uh, I, I did the marbling on this, but I scanned it in and printed it out because I wanted it on both sides, and I needed two that were the same color scheme and everything, one for the front, one for the back. So basically what I've done is I folded it in half, and then I cut it down to size uh, so that it would fit in the book just like this. 
I left this one longer so that I can trim it down to the right size after uh, I'm finished here. I'm gonna start by spreading some PVA glue on uh, the inner part of the book cover. And then I'm going to line up my end paper in here and press it in. Now there are some parts that are going to be kind of uh, not glued down. So let's go ahead and glue those now. Just kind of touch up the parts that didn't get glued all the way around the edges. Now we just kind of want to make another little crease. I probably should have done this beforehand, but you know, I didn't think about it. So I'm doing it now, but we want to put another little crease, like maybe a quarter of an inch or a little bit more than that from the center. Yeah, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. So we can take some of this PVA glue just before the fold. And then that folds up and onto that inner page. And that completes our binding on this side. And then flip the book over and we can start the binding of this side. And it's gonna be exactly the same as, the, as this side. So go ahead and do that. Here is the tail. It has come out of the uh, oven and it's ready to go. Uh, I need to paint this and I'm gonna do it the same color that I did the scale. So the first color I'm using is black. We will let this sit and dry for 20 minutes and then we'll do the next coat. So the next coat is going to be the same bluish purple that we used on the dragon scales. That was a very thin coat, so I suspect that this will dry pretty quickly. We'll put that final coat of uh, green over the top of this. Just like the, on the scales, I am also going to blot this with the sponge and we will let that dry. I put some clamps on here to make sure that it stays closed um, as I work because this guy is wanting to pop open. And this is the home stretch. This is where we pull it all together. As you can see, there's no title on here and the tail isn't added yet. And I don't have any of the corner things on there yet, but that is all about to change. As for the title, I did design a title for this. It is just typography right now. I, I didn't do anything crazy with it. Um, I printed this out as reference because I'm gonna hand draw this onto some authentic parchment paper that I had. Um, if and, and it's thin enough that if I put this below, I can see the lettering. So I'm going to use a fine point Sharpie marker, which is gonna kind of simulate, I guess, what a quill might look like. I know it's not gonna be exactly the same, but it is ink on paper, hand drawn. So there it is. And now we're gonna do a couple things to make this look cool. So first we're gonna tear this out. Now we're gonna burn it. And then if you want to, you can add some burn marks around. I'm going to. Egg to Inferno is gonna go right up here. It is time to add the lizard tail, dragon tail. In the camera, it looks a lot different, but to the naked eye, it actually looks like it's almost the same color. I'm gonna put glue on the bottom of this all the way around. Anywhere where it's flat, it's gonna get glue. Now we're gonna line it up again. So now the tail's kind of wrapping around that golden egg. Now I just need to close this up around that tail. I'm gonna take these little uh, corner pieces. These come from a craft shop. I know we're supposed to be using reusable stuff, but in my defense, I already had it sitting around and I had nothing to use it on, so this is perfect. Now it's supposed to be able to like bend around, although my book is so thick, I'm not sure it will. So let's see. Yeah, maybe I should put a little glue in there too. I'm gonna put some glue on it just to make sure it stays in place. I'm just using some pliers to sort of bend and pinch. So that is what that little corner piece looks like. I think that looks pretty cool. 
So let's go ahead and do that on this bottom part and then on the back corners as well. Now you'd think that the final touch would be to just go ahead and add the burned parchment title right here above. But I'm also going to use some distress ink. This is a vintage photo and I also have uh, walnut stain. And I'm gonna add some detail in here just to give it some more depth. So I'm actually just gonna go in here and physically place the like stamp part down. And then I'm gonna take a, a little brush here and sort of uh, blend it. So that's, that's how I'm gonna be doing this. I'm just putting a little bit of stains here and there, but I'm really trying to focus the stains around the edges because I think that's where it looks the most natural. So yeah, I think that actually gives it a lot more depth, makes it look more propish, I guess. Let's do that on the back as well. And now the final touch, we're gonna put the parchment right here. And you guessed it, we're doing it with hot glue. I don't wanna do like too much. And I wanna make sure I get it just in the right spot. And there it is, guys. Oh my gosh, this was a crazy long project, but here it is. We've got From Egg to Inferno, A Dragon Keeper's Guide. I really like the, the uh, marbled edges of the book. I think that makes it look really, really neat. Open it up. And on the inside we have the complete household tales of the Brothers Grimm. So inside we have a fully readable uh, fairy tale book. And that is it guys, that is my version of From Egg to Inferno, A Dragon Keeper's Guide. Let me know what you guys think of this. So a couple of things I would do differently because there are some things that were like the first time I tried them, especially mainly um, marbling the edges of the paper. So. I would treat that uh, before marbling the, the edges. I think the colors would pop a lot more and it, it would just look generally better if it were treated properly before marbling. But that's enough from me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this DIY, how you think this turned out. Definitely leave me a comment down below. I always read them. I usually respond in some way, so yeah. I love reading your comments. Leave me one down there. Go over to Chantel's channel, Raven, Raven's Minis. Check out her version of this, which is also linked in the description box down there. If you made it all the way to the end of the video with me, you're a wizard, Harry. Give the video a thumbs up down below if you did like it, and subscribe if you're not subscribed for more Harry Potter DIYs and unboxings. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.